Hello and good evening. I'm Melissa Idris. And I'm Sharad Kutin. Welcome to Consider This, the show where we want you to consider and then reconsider the news of the day. Let's begin with the National Worry Index. It's the first of its kind index. It was released by MA Research today. And it gauges how worried people are at the national level. So apparently, Malaysians' worry levels, it turns out, is at maximum. Now, four things uh, weigh heavily on Malaysians' minds. The high cost of living, jobs, the economy and security. Are you worried that Malaysians are a worrying lot, Sharad? <laughs> well, I must say that, you know, at the end of the day, you know, whether we're warriors or warriors, you know, the... Warriors or warriors? 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 I absolutely. prefer the warriors. The question is what we do with that warrior. Concerns are genuine, and mm. I think uh, ultimately, you know, what you want uh, the, the story to be, the conversation to be, is to take that concern. So their signal to the government uh, that they're concerned about the economy writ large, they're talking about jobs, people are concerned about the cost of living. All those four items seem to be obviously tied or related to each other. But in many uh, respects, the larger solutions or the solutions, the long-term so solutions, uh, perhaps uh, require us to think about the, the, the kind of trade-offs and the kinds of pains that we must uh, embrace in the short term in order to achieve long-term benefits. So I think the conversation only begins with surveys like this. Mm. It doesn't end with them. Of course. And I, I'm really hoping that you know, policymakers, politicians, people in power pay attention to this because uh, what, what we can see is, you know, uh, I think last year, just before GE14, uh, one of the top concerns was to do with corruption, with abuse of power, misuse of public funds. Now corruption and abuse of power play six in terms of Malaysians' list of worries. What we are worried about is, um, you know, job security, about youth unemployment, about the loss of um, income due to being fired and so on. So. Clearly, you know, uh, the man behind uh, Emma Research, as we know, right, is Hussein, was on the show recently and he talked about the Perot economy, right? So essentially, it's the bread and butter issues that we are worried about. And um, it would, I guess, do, uh, will go miles for the people in power in Putrajaya to pay attention to the fact that these are the list of concerns that Malaysia, Malaysians have. Right, because Rais Hussein has been quite critical of the president administration, saying that they've forgotten what they already knew intuitively. Mm. So maybe lending some numbers, some more granularity to uh, the, the question of the Perot economy is what was the aim of this particular you know, exercise. I do think, however, is what, what you knew, do need is some sort of disaggregation of the, the big numbers, right? So you have the large numbers. What you need to know is to say, where is it most acute? What is it that people think would help solve their problems? And finding a narrative uh, that actually resonates with people. And I think that's something that's been said over and over again, this present government has failed to do because they don't have a communications strategy. Sure. Very quickly, I want to ask you, Shira, do you think that you know, policy decisions or policy making should be driven by surveys like this? Because you know, the, the, the populist worry will always be to do with wallets, heart or brain, right? Okay, yeah, that might be. I mean, but you do want policy to be driven by evidence. Mm. And, uh, and surveys like this are part of the evidence base that you want to do, uh, to, on which to pin your policy. So I can't see any harm in taking these things seriously. You might want to look at the methodology, you might question some of the assumptions of a survey. Right. But at the end of the day, is government doing as much to discover mm. what Malaysians are concerned about and are they acting on, in it? Uh, in a way that uh, both deals with the short term as well to the long term and the medium term uh, kind of time frames. All right, well, let's turn our attention now to the debate that was ignited following news that the ashes of former Communist Party of Malaya Secretary General Chin Ping were brought back to Malaysia and scattered in the jungles and seas near Lumut, which is his hometown. What do you make of this, of the debate surrounding this, Gerard? Well, Melissa, you know, this is a, one of those debates that we've come to in, in actually, in substance rather than form over and over again, which is 
the, the historical role of the Communist Party of Malaya and the individuals involved in it, and how do we look at that particular history? So sure. every time a, a Communist Party of Malaya a type of issue arises, and it's arisen every two, one and a half years, I think it's kind of a cycle, uh, we have the same sort of vitriol being spilled and emotive arguments, I think, used in order to generate a kind of blinding effect, I think, on the public discourse. We had uh, the Prime Minister, the former IGP, I know who was instrumental in the peace treaty. Now, that's something yes. that's often forgotten. The peace treaty that actually laid out the terms for the uh, the armistice, or, the, or rather the laying down of arms uh, between uh, the communist uh, insurgents and uh, the government of Malaysia, mm. included the return of many of its top-ranking members. Right. Now, many return, uh, uh, and some of them, in fact, went on to have careers in a modern Malaysia. But Jinping was denied the right to return. Now, people are making a, some people are making a fuss about the ashes. Uh, Rahim Noor seems to have no problems, and Mahathir rather mockingly say, what do you want us to do? Uh, collect up the ashes and return them? Yeah, <laughs> I think there's no going back uh, from this. Of course, uh, bringing his ashes back home isn't the same as re uh, attempting to revive the Communist Party. But we will keep a close eye on how this conversation evolves. I do want to take a look at some other news. Now, we have an interesting uh, piece of news. The Public Accounts Committee has called for an audit on the 20 million ringgit in public funds invested into Aerodyne Ventures, which is the private firm behind the flying car project. So this is to scrutinise if the funds had been used for the project. So the Entrepreneur Development Minister, Mohamed Rezwan Yusuf, had previously told Parliament that no tax money would be involved in the building of the prototype for the flying car. But the PAC has found that 20 million ringgit had been channeled to Aerodyne through a company called Venture Tech, which is a subsidiary of Might, which is also un uh, under the Prime Minister's department. So clearly, public funds being used. Well, okay, so this is <laughs> fascinating because, you know, uh, Mohamed Ridwan is probably one of the most mocked uh, politicians in, in the cabinet at this point in time. Uh, much of it because of the way he's characterized this project uh, as a national project, so on and so forth. All of uh, the claims of which have seemed to have fallen by the wayside as uh, deeper scrutiny into the project took place. And so the, the question is, what is this minister up to now? Not to uh, cast aspersions or to suggest, uh, you know, that any kind of wrongdoing is done. But clearly the public accounts Committee is doing their job. Yeah. They are investigating something that doesn't look right. And, you know, it's a good sign. This is a sign that the new Malaysia, you know, in the new Malaysia, we are not going to have the kind of uh, opaque governance mm. that allows all kinds of nonsense to get done. I, I absolutely agree. I think this is a good thing. So the PAC report that was released today on the flying car project, I thought it was particularly interesting. I'm going to read to you some of the things that I found interesting. Funding, of course, one of the many concerns the PAC had about the project, but also the PAC noted that uh, Rizwan's public announcement about the flying car back in February, it was done without any prior presentations to Cabinet. No details planning or due diligence was done on Aerodyne's financial and technical capabilities. The other thing that was interesting was that Rezwan had misrepresented the flying car project as a national initiative when in fact the PAC had found that the project is a private initiative and that Aerodyne, as claimed by Rezwan, would be using um, local technology. The PAC found that the prototype is being built in Japan. Now, because <laughs> one of the big things is, uh, and I think this is a story that needs to get uh, some attention for the Public Accounts Committee. Remember in the Barrison National period, the Public Accounts Committee actually attempted to look into 1MDB, right? And that was scuttled by all kinds of uh, clever maneuvering by the then Prime Minister, Najib Raza. Now, the, the PAC of today comprises both, uh, and is led by, uh, somebody from the op uh, the opposition benches, but of course comprises many members of the government, mm, including... Bi a bipartisan It's a uh, bipartisan effort. It's very important because bipartisan efforts give balance and potentially uh, uh, allow nobody to hide uh, misdoings. Now, Nurul Iza is uh, from the government side in this, uh, Wong Chen, uh, Stephen Chong from uh, uh, Terbao. Uh, also, we have Akmal Nasrullah uh, uh, Mohamed Nase there. Uh, some other names uh, from the 
that side. Also on the side of the MPs, we from past, we have Takuddin Hassan, uh, one of the bigger names. Uh, also somebody from uh, uh, Srawa. Mm. We have uh, Robert Lawson Chwat. Now, uh, again, the success of this will be in calling out what is going on. Importantly, is what is the cabinet going to do? What is the prime minister going to do uh, when the final uh, report yeah. is actually uh, exposed? Yeah, so the PAC now recommending that Rizwan's ministry prepare a detailed uh, paper and present that to the cabinet. I'm going to be curious to see the reaction to that uh, from cabinet. I'm looking for the memes to come out. I'm just waiting for the memes. <laughs> All right, Bring this, on the memes. We're going to take a closer look at the missing MPs in Parliament. So make sure you stay tuned to consider this. We'll be right back.